is are assigned to Adam instead of Pham in a molecular compound. Formal charges may be determined in two different ways, either by a mathematical calculation or by simple inspection. Hi, Mr. B here. In this video, I will explain the two ways to determine the formal charge of atoms that are found in molecular or covalent compounds. for atoms in a compound may be determined as follows. The formal charge is equal to the total number of valence electrons minus the total number of non-binding electrons minus one half the total number of binding electrons. the formal charges of the atoms found in a molecule of methane. The formal charge of an atom is equal to the total number of valence electrons minus the total number of non-binding electrons minus one half the total number of bonding electrons. For the element carbon, carbon possesses four valence electrons. In this particular molecule, there are zero non-bonding electrons because each valence electron is involved in a covalent bond with hydrogen. And there are eight bonding electrons, two, four, six, eight. Four minus zero minus one half of eight, which is four. So the formal charge of carbon in this compound will be zero. Now let's determine the formal charge for each hydrogen in this compound where hydrogen possesses one valence electron and in this particular case there are zero non-binding electrons and there of course are two bonding electrons for each hydrogen. So for hydrogen, the formal charge will equal to 1 minus 0 minus 1, which is equal to 0. So in this molecule, the formal charges of both carbon and hydrogen will be 0. Now let's calculate the formal charges of the atoms found in a molecule known as Ammonia. For the nitrogen, nitrogen possesses five valence electrons. In this compound, there are two non-bonding electrons. And there are two, four, six, one half of six bonding electrons. So in this molecule, the formal charge of nitrogen will be 5 minus 2 minus 1 half of 6, which is 3. 5 minus 2 minus 3 is equal to 0. So in this molecule, the formal charge of nitrogen will be 0. And of course, as in the previous examples, hydrogen, the hydrogens are forming one covalent bond each with the nitrogen, so therefore we know that the formal charge of hydrogen in this molecule will also be zero. Do not confuse formal charges with oxidation states. In this molecule, the formal charge of nitrogen was found to be zero, but the oxidation state of nitrogen is a minus three. 
for hydrogens. The formal charges are zeros, however the oxidation state for each hydrogen will be a plus one. So the concept of formal charge and oxidation states are really two different concepts. The impact of a formal charge is actually more important when writing Lewis structures of a polyatomic ion. Consider the ion phosphate, PO4 minus 3. To write the Lewis structure for this polyatomic ion, simply place the P in the center, surrounded by four O's. Total number of valence electrons in this particular case will be 6, 6, 6, 6, 5, so 6 plus 6 is 12, plus 6 is 18, plus 6 is 24, plus 5 is 29, plus 3, so we have 32 electrons available for bonding. Connecting each oxygen to the central atom will consume 8, which leaves 24, and that 24 electrons will be evenly distributed to the perimeter atoms. This represents a Lewis structure for the polyatomic ion phosphate. To complete the structure, simply place the phosphate in brackets, minus three written outside of the bracket. determine the formal charges of each atom found in its polyatomic ion. For the phosphorus, the formal charge is equal to 5, where phosphorus is found in group 5A or 15. Five minus one minus the total number of non-binding electrons, which in this case is apparently zero. Minus one half the total number of binding electrons, which two, four, six, eight, which is eight. So we have a four. In this particular case, the phosphorus will carry a plus one formal charge, plus one. Each oxygen will have the following formal charge. So the formal charge for the oxygen will be six minus two, four, six, minus six, minus one half the total number of binding electrons, which is one half of two, so the formal charge for each oxygen will be 6 minus 6 minus 1, which is equal to negative 1. So each oxygen will have a formal charge of minus 1. The sum of the formal charges should equal the oxidation state of the phosphate ion. And indeed, Negative 1 plus negative 1 plus negative 1 plus negative 1 is equal to negative 4 plus 1 is equal to negative 3. An alternative way to determine the formal charges will be simply to calculate the number of valence electrons involved in the bonding process. To do this, simply draw a dotted circle around each atom. In this case, we'll just take two atoms since the oxygen will always be, have the same type of bonding. For the phosphorus, one, two, three, four. So for phosphorus, four valence electrons are involved in bonding. 
However, on the periodic table, phosphorus possesses five. If the number of valence electrons involved in bonding is less than the number of electrons listed on the periodic table, that element is assigned a plus one as a formal charge. So the formal charge would be positive if the number of electrons involved in the bonding process is less than what is listed on the periodic table. So we assign a plus one. For the oxygen, on the periodic table, oxygen is listed as having six valence electrons. However, in this particular molecule, oxygen possesses one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Therefore, in this, in this particular case, now oxygen is showing more than the number of valence electrons listed on the periodic table. If the element shows more electrons than what is listed on the periodic table, for example, in this case, oxygen is indicating one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whereas on the periodic table, oxygen is listed at having six valence electrons, then we have an excess of negative charge. So assign the oxygen, in this case, a minus one. Plus one, plus a minus one, plus minus one, plus minus one, plus minus one, will still equal negative three. Formal charges are also useful in determining the hybridization of the central atom. Some atoms will undergo hybridization to achieve a more stable state. Phosphorus is one of those elements, where phosphorus may also assume an sp3d hybridization state. In that particular case, phosphorus will now wish to form not four, but five covalent bonds. To demonstrate this, simply write a phosphate molecule in what is the accepted Lewis structure, where each oxygen is single bonded to the central atom. And of course, each oxygen is satisfied with an octet of electrons. This is one state, this is one Lewis structure for the phosphate ion. However, if the phosphorus is hybridized, then another bond may be formed, which yields a double bond with one of the oxygens. Let's see which state is more acceptable. The phosphate where the central atom is showing an octet of electrons or the phosphate where the central atom is showing one, two, three, four, five covalent bonds. To determine this, simply determine the formal charge of the central atom. Using the shortcut method, or, or using the simplified method, where we write a circle around the central atom. In this particular case, phosphorus is now showing one, two, three, four, five valence electrons or, or valence electrons involved in bonding. Since five is also the number of valence electrons indicated on the periodic table for phosphorus, five minus five is equal to zero. So, in this particular structure, the phosphorus will have a zero formal charge. For the oxygens, we know already that the oxygen that is single bonded to the phosphorus will have a formal charge of minus one, which was determined from the previous example. But what about the oxygen that's double bonded to the phosphorus? Now the oxygen is showing one, two, three, four, five, six. So in this particular polyatomic ion, the oxygen is showing six valence electrons, and on the periodic table, oxygen shows six. So in this case, the oxygen is now showing a zero 
formal charge. Clearly, a formal charge of zero is more acceptable than a formal charge of plus one, which is the case for this particular poly, for this particular structure. Let me just write them in. Plus one, minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one, just to alleviate any confusion. Okay? So clearly, this structure is more acceptable than this structure. However, experimental evidence indicates that the structure where phosphorus is shown in octet of electrons is more favored. So the structure where phosphorus is forming four covalent bonds is the favored structure over the structure in which phosphorus is showing one, two, three, four, five covalent bonds.